Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The U.S. military has long relied on amphibious assault capabilities to transport troops and equipment from ships to shore during combat operations. With the latest technology advancements, the U.S. has developed new and improved armored assault vehicles that are even more powerful, versatile, and efficient. In this feature, we will witness the rigorous test of the U.S. Marine Corps to evaluate its modern assault vehicles. Well-deck operations on board amphibious ships are crucial for the efficient launch and recovery of assault amphibious vehicles, landing craft, and other amphibious support equipment. The well deck is a large open space located at the stern of the ship. This compartment can be flooded to allow the launch and recovery of watercraft. The well deck can be a dangerous place. However, the crew members are trained and equipped to handle any situation that may arise. To ensure safe and effective operations, the crew follows strict protocols and procedures, including proper ballasting and deballasting of the well deck, monitoring weather and sea conditions, and communicating effectively with the embarked units. During well deck operations, Landing craft are launched from the ship and transit to the shore to deliver troops and equipment. Once the landing craft has completed their mission, they return to the ship. This amphibious combat vehicle, or ACV, for instance, has just completed its test. In addition to its swim capabilities and force protection, the ACV has a speed of over 43.5 miles per hour on land and 6.2 miles per hour in the water. It will quickly cover rugged terrain and navigate through choppy seas. Assault Amphibious Vehicles, or AAV, is another powerful watercraft designed to transport Marines from ship to shore. To launch the AAV, the ship first ballast to the proper level, and then the stern ramp is lowered to allow the vehicle to enter the water. Once in the water, the AAV can maneuver to the shore and offload Marines and equipment. During recovery, the AAV is guided back into the well deck by the sailors located on both sides of the well deck and then secured in its parking area. Another specialized amphibious vehicle is the Landing Craft Air Cushion, or LCAC. This watercraft can travel at a speed of up to 50 knots to land on a beach and disembark personnel and equipment quickly and efficiently. The LCAC uses a cushion of air to glide over water and land, making it highly maneuverable and able to navigate any water and rough terrain.
Once on the beach, the LCAC can rapidly offload equipment using its bow ramp. This allows for rapid deployment of troops and equipment during amphibious operations, increasing the efficiency and effectiveness of military missions. These powerful machines are designed to take on any challenge, from navigating rough seas to providing critical support to Marines on the ground. Whether in the open sea or a littoral environment, the U.S. Navy has a wide array of watercraft to protect every inch of its territory. Introduced in 2015, the Mark VI patrol boat has quickly become vital to the Navy's littoral combat operations. The Mark VI boats have undergone rigorous testing to ensure their effectiveness in various conditions, including high seas and extreme weather. The boats are capable of reaching speeds above 40 knots for an extended period of time. Their hulls are designed to withstand high-speed impacts and operate in rough seas. On April 16, 2020, the Mark VI patrol boat conducted a shooting exercise in the Arabian Gulf. This exercise aimed to test the accuracy, precision, and effectiveness of the Mark VI patrol boat's weapon systems and sailors. The exercise involved a series of live fire drills, which tested the boat's capabilities under different conditions. During the exercise, officers used an inflated target to simulate the size and movement of an enemy craft. The soldier fired the 50 caliber machine gun hundreds of times with precision to hit the target. Similarly, in 2018, the U.S. Marines participated in exercise Platinum Wren at Fort Trondenes, Norway, along with the Norwegian Coastal Ranger Commandos, or KJKs. The exercise involved training special forces operators in rapidly deploying and extracting personnel and equipment in maritime environments. The CB-90 fast assault craft is a multi-purpose watercraft designed for special forces operations, coastal patrol, and amphibious assault. It features twin engines and an aluminum hull capable of reaching speeds of up to 90 knots. The training took advantage of the CB-90's high speed and maneuverability, allowing for quick and effective water casting operations. The Riverine Command Boat, or RCB, is another surface craft used by the U.S. Navy for riverine warfare and coastal patrol.
The vessel is designed to operate in shallow waters and can reach speeds of up to 40 knots. To ensure its preparedness, the RCB conducts regular training. Maneuvers such as high-speed turns and quick stops are practiced to improve the crew's proficiency in operating the vessel in dynamic and challenging environments. The training is essential to the RCB's capabilities to carry out its mission effectively and safely. Beach landing operations are one of the most critical aspects of the U.S. Navy's operational capabilities. To ensure their personnel are ready for any situation, the Navy and Marine Corps conduct regular simulations of beach landing operations. These simulations are essential as they prepare the sailors and Marines for combat scenarios that they may face in the future. One notable example of this type of exercise is the Rim of the Pacific, or Rim Pack exercise, the world's largest international maritime warfare exercise. During a typical beach landing simulation, the U.S. Navy deploys landing crafts loaded with Marines and equipment to a beachhead. The Marines then disembark and establish a beachhead, securing the area and setting the stage for the next phase of the operation. Additionally, to meet the increased complexity of warfare, technology and information warfare, the U.S. Navy, along with the Marine Corps and private industry partners, conduct ship-to-shore maneuver exploration and experimentation, or S2ME2, to test and evaluate the emerging naval technologies related to amphibious warfare. The S2ME2 exercise includes live demonstrations and simulations of new technologies, such as unmanned systems and enhanced communication systems. Drones are launched from the ABV using a special unmanned launcher that carries the drone to the intended location. vertical takeoff and landing, or VTOL, drones are being tested to improve aerial support. These unmanned vehicles have the ability to take off and land vertically, making them highly versatile for use in naval operations. Vertical drones are equipped with advanced radar systems. They provide the Navy with enhanced situational awareness, allowing them to detect and track targets from long distances. The U.S. military's constant efforts to improve their amphibious assault capabilities have made them a formidable force to reckon with worldwide. The ability to launch and deploy unmanned vehicles from landing crafts offers great opportunities, including increased intelligence and improved target acquisition. This innovative approach to warfare underscores the U.S. military's ongoing commitment to staying ahead of the curve and maintaining its position as a world-class military force.
That is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.